welcome to another Zero tutorial. My name is Samuel Burmeister and I'm the owner here at Tall Books. Today I'm going to take you through one of my favorite elements of Zero, and that is tracking categories. Um, Zero uses the name tracking categories to cover things like departments, cost centers, and locations. Um, and whilst it's not full job tracking, it does cover a lot of the PL based job tracking requirements you might have. So let's jump into it. How do you get to the tracking categories section? So the first thing you want to do, I'll demonstrate here in the demo file, is go to the accounting tab and choose advanced to go to advanced settings. In the advanced settings section, you will see the tracking categories. Here we are. You can also star those if you want them to show up under the accounting menu. So a common question people ask is how many tracking categories can I have? Typically, you don't need a lot of tracking category verticals. You just simply need to know how many of that type you can have. For example, if I put a job number on every single client job that I um, partake in or my staff partake in, then I want to have a list of plenty of those. And you can do that. The options are two types of tracking categories with a hundred options below. So in this example here, you can see we've got region and then they've added east side, north, south and west coast. Another common example that people use these for is jobs. So you might have like locations, you might have different ways of expressing those jobs so once you've set them up they're very flexible as you add and take away from them over time you can see i've now got my two tracking categories i've got the region and i've got the job code so in this case uh, you might ask what about if you want to specify which department or region it is and which job you can use both on one transaction so now I've set up my tracking categories, I'm going to now assign them to some expenses. So the most common places you'd see this firstly is the bank feeds screen. So if you go to accounting and bank feeds or accounting and bank accounts, we'll have a look at some of the bank transactions waiting to be reconciled. So when you click reconcile and go in to view some data. So let's say this rent expense here, I'm going to create an expense for it, but I want to specify which job that rent was for. I now have the option to drop down the job header here and choose what it applies to. So I can choose Forsyth Street and that related to East Side. So that way, when I add this expense, it will now assign it to East Side and Forsyth Street for me. So you can do it on a line by line basis like that. Another option, if let's say this expense here for smart agency, let's just call it advertising. Let's say it went across two jobs. If you click add details, you can split line items as usual in zero, and you can then assign a job per line item. So I might divide that by two. and say that this one was Forsyth and this one was Job ABC. So you can get the idea here that they're quite flexible in terms of income and expenses. So they're both advertising, but I want to assign half to each job. Cool, so when I save that, I can reconcile it and code it across those jobs. Same thing applies to income, nothing different enter the income as usual and assign the job or region. Okay, let's look at the same thing on an invoice or a bill. So on an invoice, you will now once again have a new tab available. You simply add the tab with the relevant region or job or whatever you've called your tracking categories to that line item. Same thing for bills. If we go into our bills section, we 
we will have an option to add the two tracking categories that we've created. Great. So another handy thing to know with tracking categories, you can assign them for contacts. So if you're doing a specific project based on a client, a supplier or customer, you can go into that customer or supplier card under the contacts menu. And in that specific contact, you can assign one of these tracking categories. So if you click edit when you're in the contact, And where are we here? So you can see under either sales or purchases, depending on whether you're buying or selling or both, you can set up default tracking categories based on what you've already put in. Awesome. So that's an example of the main areas that people use the tracking categories on. How do you report on those tracking categories? I want to see how much profit or loss I've made on Forsyth Street. So my suggestion to get started is to go to the profit and loss report. So run your P&L under accounting and then profit and loss. It's the most handy report to run as a business in general on a regular basis and always run the new report. Okay, once you run the new report, just for the example, I'm gonna use a huge date range um so let's go custom so i'm not sure when the default dates are based in this demo file so if we update that if you go to report settings you've now got the option to choose your regions so i might just want to look at one job so i want to say forsyth street so now it's only going to show me a pnl based on forsyth street you can see, okay, this job, we've only assigned this much advertising, this much rent expense, we're running at a loss on this job, there's no income. You could do all jobs if you wanted to see a comparison of how much has been billed and received for each job in total. Personally, I would be running it on a specific job if possible. You can also customize this report further with the edit template option down the bottom. So if you go here to the edit option, just remember that you've got extra tabs that you can add into Xero. So we can do a quick look at that. So let's say in this profit and loss example, I wanted to add a column for a specific job or region by clicking on the horizontal or vertical option. You can see I've got the option to add what I want. So if I wanted to add a specific job here against my profit and loss, I can do so and then save my customized report and view any data for that job. So in this case, there might not be anything because we've just created it, but oh yeah, there we go. So you get the idea. So it's a lot of flexibility. Run your P&L, start the report settings to look at the details. And if you want further information, you can edit the template and create some custom reports. Hope that helps you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.